My first real engineering experience came when I was about 18 years old. And at the time, I was working in a factory, a, a, a little run-down plastics blow molding factory in Jonesboro, Arkansas, okay? So, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, not exactly the most scenic place you're ever going to want to visit and a factory that uh, looks like it was built in somebody's garage. I mean, it had all these, you know, it had 14, you know, aging blow molding machines, you know, from, you know, all different parts of the world. And I mean, it just like, you know, wherever they could scrounge these things up. And I, I got a job out there as a machine operator. But, you know, I, uh, every time, you know, the process would start screwing up and the machines would start spitting out bad parts, which was pretty frequent because there's a lot of humidity in Arkansas and, and heat and, you know, temperature variations and the humidity jumping up and down. You know, these processes just go crazy. And especially in this little, you know, non-climate controlled factory. Uh, it was, it was, you know, always a race trying to keep these machines up and running smooth and making good parts. And every time my machine would start to spit out crap, one of the process technicians would come over and, you know, start tweaking the process, changing the times, the temperatures, the pressures. And, you know, I was only 18 years old. I had no education, but you know, I was kind of ambitious and I, I didn't want to be a six dollar an hour machine operator for the rest of my life. So every time one of these guys would come over and start working on my machine, you know, I was tapping him on the shoulder. Hey, hey, well, what you doing now? Well, what are you changing? What, why are you going to do that? Well, what, what's it going to uh, affect, you know? Well, you know, five minutes ago, you changed this other thing. Is this going to affect that? Are you going to have to change it back? And, you know, these guys probably got, you know, a little bit annoyed with me, but I kept bothering and bothering them. And pretty soon I got the process figured out. So I'm, you know, just this little uneducated 18 year old kid. But at least now when my machine starts crapping out bad parts, I could do the process control myself. I could tweak that process and get good parts coming out, you know. And now all of a sudden they were kind of glad that they took the time to talk to me because it made their jobs easier. Well, fast forward a few months and, you know, one of these guys blows off and uh, gets a better job or gets run over by a truck. I don't know what happened to the guy, but uh, all of a sudden his job opened up and they start taking applications. And, well, you know what? Guess who already knows how to do the job and has a proven track record of doing it? So, boom, you know, all of a sudden... You know, all these guys are like in their 30s, 40s doing this job. And here comes me, 18 years old. And oh, look at me. I'm a process tech now. Well, pretty soon we get this million dollar order. OK, and, you know, for most of us, a million dollar order. I mean, that's kind of chump change. But when we're talking about, you know, this was a little small factory, a million dollar order. That was big potatoes for these guys. Right. So it was making these little, you know, Ryobi hobby toolboxes, little plastic, you know, toolboxes about yay big. And for the life of them, they could not get the, the process down. We had a process engineer. This guy's name was like Troy something. I don't know. But he had a degree and, you know, he was, you know, the sharp dressed guy and well paid and. You know, I mean, everyone kind of worshipped the ground he walked on because in that factory, he was the only real engineer that there was. And he was on the machine running those Ryobi parts, man, day and night. He was trying to get this thing smoothed out. And the parts were heavy um, or they would warp or, you know, there were just all kinds of problems with them. And we were just about to lose this project, you know and all the money and I mean it, there was going to be penalties I mean it was going to be a disaster but um, you know he, he worked on it worked on it wouldn't let anyone touch it finally you know I was working the night shift I mean I was working like 11 p.m. to 7 in the morning so usually whenever I was at work all the big guys higher ups even Troy they weren't there you know it was just my supervisor uh, me and the other process tech and a bunch of operators and assemblers and a couple of maintenance guys. So I really didn't have a lot of oversight. Uh, I put my best operator on that machine 
and uh, I had been teaching her process control also, okay? So between the two of us, I mean, you know, we were kind of a team. I, you know, I made those guys teach me when I was a machine operator, so I was paying it forward, and I was teaching this girl, Sally, right? Well, she, I say girl, she was like twice my age, but who's counting? Um, anyway, so she and I were, you know, started working on that machine and tweaking it, and it took us like two nights and all of a sudden we had this machine spitting out beautiful parts i mean beautiful toolboxes um they weighed less than they were supposed to but they passed all the rigidity tests um they didn't warp these things were rock solid and we were actually saving money and all of a sudden uh, you know when the when everyone came in in the morning they were looking at our you know statistics for the night and they saw our numbers, and I mean, we had the plant manager, the plant superintendent, the process engineer, my supervisor. I mean, all these people were over there standing. I mean, what did you do? What did you do? And, you know, because the, the numbers were way off from what they had been. And I mean, these guys were furious at first. And I said, you know what? Look at the boxes. Let's talk about it after. And they're looking at the boxes. Well, what the hell? Well, this isn't, there's no way. And they're weighing it and they're using ultrasonic micrometers and they're checking the thicknesses and, you know, testing the rigidity and they're scratching their heads. And every single one of them are like, what the hell? You know, they couldn't figure it out. How the hell did you do this? Who did this? I did this. Me and Sally, you know, we did this. How? How, how do you think? We were working on the process. We were tweaking the profile. You know, we thinned it out. No wonder it was warping. You guys had too much material in there. You're losing money. You know, all this stuff. And um, all of a sudden, they, then all of a sudden, they stop looking at me. And they start looking at Troy. And Troy, why didn't we do this before? And, you know, is this good? Is this, you know, is there any reason why this wouldn't work? And, you know, he, he was standing there kind of turning red and looking at everybody and, no, th this is good. This is, this is real good. This, you know, we've got a profile now. This is awesome. And um, I don't know if he was working there much longer or not, but uh, I was and I kind of floated away and went and did other things. But... You know, at age 18, I already, I already had that taste in my mouth, that sweet taste of, you know, I can do with no education and, you know, know anything and just being 18 years old and only getting paid $6 an hour. I can do something that this college educated smuck who's making probably 10 times more than me, what he couldn't do in, you know, months of trying and working on it. And, you know, maybe I got lucky, maybe, you know, I figured something out that he did. I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, try to measure brains with this guy or anything. But long story short, you know, I didn't take a direct path to get into engineering. I took a few twists and turns. I mean, I was always kind of chasing the money. But, you know, that was my real first taste of what engineering is and what it feels like to get it right. And I got to admit, I liked it. It was pretty sweet.